All right, let's kick this thing off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Going Digital with ForeFlight Logbook. Thanks for joining. Uh, once again, for those of you who have been to any of our previous webinars, this is our first webinar uh, of this series that is going to be focused on Logbook. And ForeFlight Logbook is a capability that we introduced to the app several years ago, and it has only grown in, in capability and, and usefulness since then. And because it's an integrated logbook, it, it integrates with the rest of the app and can do things like automatically create new logbook entries based on flights you've done. So it's very, very useful. But one of the big uh, challenges that people face in adopting ForeFlight logbook is if they've never had a digital logbook before, they've just had their, their old paper logbook, uh, it can be very challenging to get that converted over into a format that can then be imported to ForeFlight Logbook, both in terms of uh, just the sheer amount of work involved or all of the questions about how to do it and the complexity. So it's a, a very common support topic that we hear about. And so this webinar is meant to address all of those questions and all of those complexities and give you a resource that you can use to uh, really you know, get yourself going on the right path towards uh, using a digital logbook. So our presenters uh, for this webinar will be Joey Arena. He'll be our main presenter. He is a customer success coordinator at ForeFlight, and he's one of our resident logbook support specialists. So he uh, is really focused on the sort of questions that, that he'll be answering in the webinar today, questions of how to uh, import your logbook into ForeFlight, how to convert it, if you're coming from another digital logbook provider, what you need to do in that situation. So he is uh, one of the most, uh, he has some of the best expertise in this area at, at the entire company. Supporting Joey for Q&A mainly will be Thomas Doherty, who uh, has been involved in some webinars before, and if you've been to any of our events, you've perhaps seen him give a, a presentation on, on a stage. So he is uh, the logbook project manager. So he will be available to help with questions about the product. And he's also here just to watch and listen to your feedback about logbook, uh, just so he can get a sense of what questions you all have, what difficulties you might have, and uh, where you all would like us to take that product in the future. I want to, uh, before we start, I just want to state that at the end of this webinar, there will be a survey. So uh, if once we get to the end, if you can just stick around for uh, just 30 seconds, once we end the webinar, that survey will pop up and you can provide uh, some feedback on the webinar and feedback on uh, ForeFlight and, you know, what other webinars you'd like us to do in the future. Uh, also, this webinar will be available for Wings Credit. So any of you who are attending, if you registered under the same email address that you use uh, with the FAA WINGS program, then we will submit uh, those emails and you'll get credit for this webinar. Lastly, uh, when this webinar is complete, we will take a recording of it and we'll upload it to the ForeFlight On Frequency webpage. So that's at foreflight.com slash on frequency. Uh, all of our webinars that we do in this series will upload there. So if you have to leave early, don't even worry about it. Starting tomorrow, you can just go to that page and watch the recording. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Joey. Thank you, Sam. Hello, everybody. Like Sam said, my name is Joey Arena, and I'm a customer success coordinator here at ForeFlight. I am a commercial helicopter pilot and CFI. I also hold a fixed wing private pilot rating, and I'm a former FBO and flight school owner. So my love for ForeFlight and for the logbook portion of ForeFlight has been under development for many years, even prior to coming to work for ForeFlight. And it's a real honor today to be able to present my first webinar on such a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Unfortunately, today's topic is a very, very dry one. So, as we dive into this project, I'm going to try and add a little color to it. I'm going to stop throughout and a couple points to answer a couple questions as we go. Please ask as many questions as you'd like along the way. Our team behind is going to be answering those as we go and cherry picking some of those to be answered live here in the webinar. And as always, you have the pilot support team behind you for any other questions that you have please reach out to us. That's, we're very passionate about 
sharing our love for for flight with aviation with all of you. So thank you again for joining today's webinar. So let's get started. The for flight logbook feature is a very integrated portion of the app, as Sam had mentioned earlier. It allows all of our pilots to be able to track their hours, their currency, ratings and endorsements, and all of that information is available on all of their connected devices. The For Flight logbook is included on all plus level subscriptions and is one of the most popular features in For Flight today. Along with the logbook, you get the fanatical customer support right behind you so that anytime you have these questions, a little glitch here and there, it's normally gonna be in your data, but we're always gonna be here, help you find it, get you back going. When we're discussing about a digital logbook like ForeFlight versus the original paper logbook that we all started with, you know, ForeFlight is basically a paper logbook. It uses very simple data just like you did when you were actually filling out the columns in your paper logbook. Both of them are designed to fulfill the requirements from the FARs in Part 6151. We also have the ability to, once the data is imported into the program, to do two versions of a complete logbook report, an abbreviated version and then a full detailed version. When you print these reports out, they're actually formatted to look like a Jeppesen logbook, the same ones that you've used for years and years. But when we boil down to it, both logbooks are only going to be as good as the data that you're putting into them. There's an acronym in computers and data where it's called GIGO, garbage in equals garbage out. So the more time that you spend here actually getting the data correct in whether it's your paper logbook or your digital logbook, the better your data is, the better you're going to be able to present that forward for whatever needs you will have in the future. Some of the advantages of using a digital logbook as opposed to a paper one is the most important one to me is the fact that my logbook's available on all of my devices. Four flight subscriptions allow you one iPhone, one iPad, and a backup of either one of those devices. So you have access to your logbook on three devices at all times. And with the latter portion of our program today, we're actually going to be putting our certificates and ratings and our medical actually in the logbook. So you'll have pictures of it right there with you. So that way, if you don't have to uh, present that other than your legality for when you're actually flying, you actually have those records with you at all times, especially like with me carrying my iPhone everywhere I go. Uh, another one is that ForeFlight has this amazing power to be able to automatically generate your logbook entries for you. So you don't have to remember to log every single flight because if you're like me, you're not gonna fly without ForeFlight anyway. So every track log that's created can generate a draft logbook entry. And also, if you're a professional pilot, every time you file a, a, a flight plan, you can actually get a logbook draft entry created from your flight plans when you file them. So that's also a really good idea. All of this leads to a great concern of how is my data gonna be protected if I lose my device, if I damage my device, all of these different questions. So ForeFlight backs up your data automatically and on the regular. So we have backups of that data. We have multiple servers to back up that data. So you're not gonna have to worry about that. Uh, another great feature is the fact that we have the multiple reports available in the app to be able to generate your data and adjust it to the way that you'd like it to be presented. Uh, all of the entries that go into the logbook are very detailed. Uh, not in your paper logbook can you include all of your passengers, photographs of the flights, comments, but just like a paper logbook, your CFI can actually endorse every flight with a finger signature and you have that signature and when you print that report, it looks exactly the same like they signed it in real life. And finally, the last advantage that I'm gonna discuss here is the fact that each logbook entry can be shared with other four flight account holders and anybody that has an email address. 
So if you were flying with a buddy and you want to put the flight in your logbook after he's done it, he can share it to your four flight account. You can approve it. And now you've got the same entry in your logbook. Or if you want to show your wife or your parents or, who, or your girlfriend where your flight was that day, you can actually send them a web link. And we're going to discuss that at length here shortly. This is uh, this portion is going to be setting up the logbook, getting ready to put your entries actually into it. And we're going to start on the more page under the logbook tab, which is where the four flight logbook resides. We're going to click on the bottom tab at the bottom that says settings. And when we do that, we're going to be able to pull up the settings menu. So before we can actually put data into our logbook, we want we can custom tailor that that uh, entry page to look how we want. And we can open and turn off the fields that we don't actually want to do. So when we click on configure fields, it shows all of the pre-made fields that are available from ForeFlight. And we have the buttons to the left and right that are able to rotate the, the slider back and forth to either turn that on or off. At the bottom, we also have the ability to add custom fields for any custom day that you would like to keep track of and that's available in the experience report so now that we've set that up and we're going to be ready to actually put this data into your into your logbook we need to look at what the goals are of how you want this data to be presented do you want to continue forward from this point and make the four flight logbook essentially just the next paper logbook? Sum up the total on the end of the page for your total time, put that one line item in the four flight and then continue putting logbook entry. Or are you like me and you really wanted to have a complete log of every flight that you've done in the past? So we're gonna discuss both of those methods here today. Like me, we always wanna find the easiest path. So the way to get into this, the easiest and shortest method is gonna be what we call the catch-up entries. With the catch-up entries, you're going to be able to use three different methods to shorthand enter this information into ForeFlight. So the way that we do that is we start with what's called a page line summary. The page line summary is the exact same method that you use with uh, the paper log books. So as you see that in the regular picture, you have a page total and then the amount for previous page and then total hours to date. So we can start from this point forward with beginning a brand new log book. Now, for those of you that have already been entering entries into your logbook up to this point, and you want to bring in your older flight data, well, this is also a great method to do that because you'll be able to create one line. You can post date it to before you started using ForeFlight and then enter that into a big block of time. So let's create a page line summary together. So we start on the main logbook page and we press the plus sign in the top corner, and then we choose new entry. As we press that, we're going to see all of the data fields that we had originally set up in the app with those radio buttons. So as we begin to enter our data, we check off the date that we're gonna start it at, and I'm going to start at the beginning of this year because I think that that's a good starting point. Like if you have to submit an experience report for insurance purposes or any of that matter, I would want to manually enter all of my current flights for up to the year and then use my broad stroke entries for that data previous to that date. So we're gonna start off with January 1st, 2020. We do not want to enter any aircraft information or any of our route data for this portion because we are just adding time to the columns. So what we're looking at is we've got our times, our cross country takeoffs and landings, each one of these fields. And you can just take the totals from your previous logbook, total them into this one entry, and you've got a very good start for moving forward into ForeFlight. Now, the more advanced method of doing the quick catch-up entry is either the time by type or time by tail entries. 
this is where you're going to be able to utilize for flights reporting in the best manner because now we're actually putting in advanced characteristics so that you'll be able to track complex time high performance time turbine versus piston time airplane versus helicopter time so all of those are going to be able to come in through this method of entry we add this entry the exact same way by clicking on the plus sign and then the new entry button and when we go to the next page, we're going to first tap on the aircraft tab. That brings us into the aircraft page and clicking on its plus sign. We get to our entry for entering the data for the actual aircraft. So when we're doing time by type, we don't need to have every specific airplane we've ever flown. I've flown many different airplanes and helicopters over the years. So if I just want to have all of my time in an R22 or all of my time in a Cessna 172, I can just do it by the type code. By clicking on the IKO designator tab, that's where we're going to enter this information into. I can either put, like I was showing here, the Cessna 172, or if we're going to do it by time by tail, if you haven't flown that many aircraft, or you just want to say that these are the aircraft I want to keep track of, you can put their specific tail number actually into the data there. We want to be able to complete this information as much as possible. You can see that the items highlighted in orange are required because the type code, the category and class, the gear type and engine type are going to give those extra attributes to the experience report that are going to be able to give you those specific times per tail number or as type code also. But we also have year, make, and model equipment type, and then the radio sliders at the bottom for complex high performance pressurized. So please do make sure that you fill out each one of these fields. You're gonna be happier having a complete data set. And uh, as the app continues to develop, we will rely on complete data sets. So now we're gonna click the back button at the top of the page, and we go back to our entries as before. We're going to check off the aircraft and the other remaining tabs. And again, in just like in the entry before, we're not going to enter any of our root information into here. So as we've got to that point, I'm going to uh, answer just a few questions here that have been that have come in. Uh, can a photo of a flight be added to a logbook entry? similar to Log10 Pro. And uh, absolutely, we're, at, we're going to discuss that much later on um, after the data is actually imported. But yes, uh, you can, for when you're bringing in individual logbook entries, be able to add photos. And uh, does the import aircraft that you've already defined in the aircraft section? Okay, so. Uh, this I am going to explain here in another few minutes, but I can do it now. The aircraft tab in the performance area and the logbook aircraft tab are two separate functions of the app. If you have never set up a logbook before, when you tap on the aircraft tab for the first time in the logbook, you are going to see some of your existing logbook profiles, but they will not be complete as that data was not already entered in. So I look at it like this. The, in the more aircraft tab, those are the profiles of the aircraft you're actually flying right now because those are the performance profiles that you're going to be doing your cross-country planning. You're going to be doing your filing and your briefing with. But how many people are going to fly the Cessna 150 that they learned to fly in? I know that I'm never going to fly the Schweitzer that I learned to fly in 12 years ago. So I don't need to have that performance profile in my more aircraft tab, but it is important to my logbook. So especially because I want to keep track of all of my piston helicopter time and actually all of my Schweitzer time in the time by type area. So that also helps me with insurance purposes, giving instruction so that when I go on someone's insurance policy, I can be able to provide that as this is how much time I actually have in that specific aircraft. So that was a great question. So we're going to move on and, uh, for those that that wasn't a good enough option to do the catch-up entries and you're not really interested in making the easy route, then we're going to do the complete flight history now. 
And the first method we're going to discuss of bringing in all of your flights in is using our import tool. And our importing tool is where we create a spreadsheet and utilize that spreadsheet to bring your data into ForeFlight. So we're going to start here on the plan.forflight.com page. And if you're a regular ForeFlight user, you're aware that this is our web-based planning tool. It's a light version of the iOS app. It's not as sophisticated as the iOS app, but it does get the job done. And for our logbook purposes here on the web, we are going to use the import page. Now I know what you're thinking. If we are already on ForeFlight Web and we already have a logbook tool there, why can't we enter the, our information in all of our flights right there on the web? Well, unfortunately we don't have that support right now because we're using an iOS app versus a web-based app. But you know what, send us an email, tell the pilot support team you want it, and you know what, ForeFlight listens to every one of those emails. So please always let us know what you're thinking. We rely on our pilot support. But today we are going to use the blue download for flight template bar located on the import page. And what this is gonna do is it's going to download a CSV file. What is a CSV file? It's just a file type that is, it's called comma separated values, which just means it separates each row by a comma. So it's very simple, very simple data. So when we download that, we also support a TSV file, which means tab separated value, which just means there's a space. It's normally like five spaces, but a space variated file or just a basic text file. A lot of logbooks actually export in a text file as opposed to a CSV file, but some others do in the CSV file also. The most important thing is that a CSV file is very simple. So the computer is going to be able to read it, it's going to be able to understand it, and it's going to be able to put it where it needs to go. Now, dealing with a spreadsheet, obviously, you're really going to have to have a little bit of familiarity with using a spreadsheet. Uh, if you've used spreadsheets in the past, you're not going to have any issue bringing this data in. But if you've never really used spreadsheets before, by the time this is over, you're going to be a pro at this. So don't let it worry you, and remember, the pilot support team's behind you. So we're gonna get it taken care of together. Now, as I said before, getting the data in the proper area is crucial because we rely on correct and accurate data to make a complete logbook. So as long as we can get this data in correctly the first time, we don't have to worry about those errors that could come up from addition. Um, I don't have all of my landings. It's showing that I have this many versus that and so on and so forth. So. You know, we definitely want to make sure we get the right data the first time. So when we start from scratch with our logbook template and you open it for the first time and you see this garbage, well, understand that this is just the simple raw data of a CSV file. This is not how we want you to be manipulating the data. If you are a professional at working spreadsheets and you can keep track of all of those spaces and commas in your head, that's amazing. I, I, my hat tips to you. I absolutely can't. I'm just a lonely helicopter pilot, so I need something a little more simple. So when I, and I've been using Excel for years, so I'm very comfortable with that program. If you're comfortable with uh, Mac numbers or Google Sheets or any of the other spreadsheet programs out there, some Linux-based stuff, um, feel free to use that as long as you make sure you export your file into a CSV format, then our program is going to be able to read it. So we definitely want to give a big old green check. If you're seeing it like that, you know you're already on the good path. So how do we put the data actually into the spreadsheet? Well, the computer is going to rely on a proper formatting of that data. And on the plan.forflight.com page, we actually give you all of the formatting notes right there. So we start off with what's the date, the aircraft ID, but the phrase here is important because exactly how it's written out is how the program wants to see it. So you see where it says time out with no space and a capital O, try to keep it as accurate as possible when you're putting that information in. And then for say like with that timeout field, you wanna be able to put it in Zulu time with no colon in the middle. 
we just want to see 1823 for that time and uh, the examples just go on and on for there so that that page is going to be very useful in getting the data correct into your logbook as you go so when you actually look at the sheet that we've provided we've given you a tip above the actual header so that you know what the values mean and then the actual data as it's going to be done and we also combine both of our aircraft and flights tables into the same te template and i always say this in all of my support emails that the header formatting is the key to conversion because you your paper logbook is going to say PIC time. Well, fortunately, that's what our spreadsheet says. But if your time says day landings, ours says day landings underscore full stop because we're adding that full stop caveat so that we can apply that to other reports that require full stop landings like your 90 day currency. So even though your paper logbook doesn't say it exactly the same way, we want to count these according to those formatting notes. Now, once you've done this the first time, if you decide to add another big block of time, you don't have to fill out all of the information because you can have the aircraft fields empty in all flights information or just import aircraft data and no flights. If there's an empty space there, the, the, the import tool is just going to ignore it. And also the the arrangement of the columns isn't overly critical. So you can put them in any order. So if your paper log book, or if you created your own spreadsheet years ago and you've got them in a certain order, well, you can move them around. You just gotta make sure that the header represents the data that's inside of it in the format that our import tool is looking for. So, you know, you've gotta use those formatting notes to, like we just said, and when we're looking at the aircraft table here, these profiles are what you're doing to populate the logbook aircraft tab. We were speaking earlier how there is a difference between the more aircraft section and the logbook aircraft section. So under more aircraft, you're not gonna get fixed gear versus retractable gear. You're not gonna get high performance complex. You're not going to get piston versus turbine. Well, actually you'll do that with your fuel selection, but for the sake of it, these are the details of the aircraft pertinent to the reports in the logbook. So what we're doing is we are going to complete this information and then the report will be able to give us by class, by type, by characteristic, all of that information. And you're gonna do the exact same thing on the flights table. Just make sure you get all of the correct information in because 15 more minutes here could save you two hours of troubleshooting down the road. So anything we can do here to make that as painless down the road is what we're trying to do. So I'm going to answer another question that's just come in. If I don't have times, only dates from flights years ago, Will it accept a non-entry there or do I have to make them up? So what's going to happen is the program can only import the data that you present it to. So if you have a tail number and a date, but no time, you'll still get a flight and an entry for an aircraft, but no times will be applied forward. Remember that I said that the four flight logbook is very similar to a paper logbook. Only what you put in it is going to be represented. So if you are putting an entry in there and you didn't fill out the rest of the comma, it's still in your logbook. It's just not adding up towards your totals. So that's uh, how we'll answer that question today. All right, so moving forward, the next piece of data that we can keep track of but on with your importing of your data are the custom data fields. In the app, under the configure fields, when you tap on create a custom field, we can utilize these multiple methods of displaying that entry into ForeFlight. So we can do it by a word, we can do it by a number, we can do it by like hours, like off of your hobs, a counter like plus and minus, dates, times, or just a toggle switch like you see on the right side of the screen here. 
So this is how you can create them in the app. But the import tool actually supports this same feature. Now, when you're bringing this in, this is not covered in the formatting notes. So you'll have to bracket the information for the style that it's going to be presented in the app and then also your grass landings or surface landings, or I mean short field landing, short field takeoff, any of those fields that you want to take care of. And then you can put that data in going down the columns, just like all of your other entries. And when you import this into ForeFlight, it's going to add it at the bottom of the list of entry data. And then it's going to generate this report in the, the experience report for you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pause for a few minutes and we're going to look at a couple of the questions that have come in. Uh, if you need to stretch your legs a little bit, you want to refresh your cup of coffee, this is the time to do it right now because I know how dry this subject is. So we all don't want to just sit here and have our legs continue to go numb. So um, we're just going to sit here and scroll through. And how can I record touch and goes? Um, you can't find a field directly in there. So that's a good question. So one of the things that you're seeing is we have the day landings, the day takeoffs, and then day landings full stop, or it's all landings. So what happens is if you fly and you have five takeoffs and two full stop landings and you have five landings overall, well, that's where you're going to have the difference in the amount of landings because you had three touch and goes. So one of the ways to do that that I feel is just a better option is to go ahead and add a custom field and do it on the same counter that you do with landings, a plus minus counter. And then when you're flying, go down to there, hit three touch and go landings, and that's uh, going to be there. I'm seeing a lot of questions that some of my audio cut out, so I do apologize. Uh, I hope you and your family's doing good through the COVID issue with everybody's facing. And uh, one of those things is we take up a lot of bandwidth at home now. So all those YouTube and Netflix videos. So um, let's see what else. I just did a custom field. Simulator training time being recorded. This is a great question because this is one of the, the questions that comes in to me the most often is, how can I bring in simul simulator time and how do I determine whether it's applicable towards going forward with my actual top flight time. When you create an aircraft profile, you can actually create an aircraft simulator profile and you change aircraft to equipment and then you choose an approved training device, a basic training device, an advanced training device, which is like a full motion sim. But we're only looking for four data fields for simulator time. The most common thing that people mess up is they add total time or PIC time to their simulator time. And all we're looking for in our reports is simulated flight, simulated instrument, dual received, or dual given. So those are the only four fields that you should enter when you're working with your simulator data. That was a great question. Keep them coming. We'll uh, answer some more, me and Thomas, later on in the actual Q&A. But for now, for those guys that actually have an existing digital logbook, how can we get that into for flight today? So the two most popular apps out there that I deal with all the time is Log10 Pro and Zulu Log. And I used Logbook 10 or Log Log10 Pro prior to coming to ForeFlight actually. And I actually did one of these exports to bring in my complete flight log. I had a heck of a time with it because when I started using ForeFlight Logbook, it was, it was much less sophisticated than it is now. They've ironed a lot of the bugs out now, so it's much easier to do. So one of the things you're gonna notice about bringing those exported files from those other companies is they don't use the same header information that we do. So that's where, remember, the key to conversion is the header formatting. So that's one of the things. However, though, if you do decide just to drag and drop your file, this is a Log10 profile. And at the top, it's got a little snippet of how they lay out their data. And it starts just at the very top of the columns with date, then a caution, total time, aircraft ID, aircraft type, but you notice how aircraft ID has a space. 
aircraft type has a space. They actually do use from and to, but a lot of logbook companies actually use destination and departure. So those will not translate into for flight data. So you will have to update those headers. And you just go all the way across, look at our formatting notes versus their formatting notes. And remember, you can always try the download. You don't have to click the import to logbook button. So what happens is when you drag and drop that file, which we'll discuss here in a few more minutes, it gives you the preview and then it tells you the warnings. So we're seeing here that there's non-standard approach types detected, aircraft class and category are not included. It's not a field there. Aircraft gear type's not there. And then there's a lot of fields that ForeFlight has no idea what they are. Log 10 Pro has dozens of data fields to track. It's incredibly complex. ForeFlight's a more simple operation. I like simple, that's why I love ForeFlight. It's so intuitive that it's very easy to learn how to operate and uh, not, not highly workload intensive to the pilot. So that's what I really like about it. So if we import this data, there is gonna be significant holes with the aircraft data. So what happens with Log 10 Pro is we actually have to export two different exports. You have to do the flight and you have to do the aircraft information. All of this is available on our support documents. Go to foreflight.com, go to our support center, search for how do I import my logbook in log 10, or just do search log 10. It'll pull up, it's got pictures, it's like a coloring book, paint by numbers, just this is how you do it, this is how you get it in, and again, fanatical supports behind you on that. When we're dealing with like a, a do log where it's really, really simple. They are very, very streamlined and that's why they're so popular, just like us. And so that data is going to come in very easily, but they just put a tail number. They put a root instead of to and from. It's just so super, super simple that a lot of that data is not going to correspond. So particularly with like a logbook profile like this, I would say open our template copy and paste that information over to our information, then fill out the aircraft profiles, get them into that spreadsheet early so that you're not going through the app, opening an aircraft, filling it out, back button, open another aircraft, back button over and over and over again till you wanna bash your head into the iPad. So let's keep that as simple as possible. Let's do it in the spreadsheet on your computer in your nice comfy chair, and that's a good way to work on that. And again, send your data files to us. We'll review them and make pointers. We don't actually create these files for you. You are going to have to do that on your own, but we have tons of support documents out there and the support team behind you all the way. So let's actually get some of this data into our account. We're gonna go back over to ForeFlight on the web and this is plan.foreflight.com slash logbook where we uh, downloaded our template originally. And what we're going to do is we can either drag and drop the file that we worked so hard on here, or we can just click browse files and drag it and drop it. We do have a sample logbook loaded up. And as we click and drop that in, it's going to give us our preview. And our preview shows us the first row in it, the last row in it, the total number of entries, the total number of aircraft we're adding, total hours. And right now we don't see any warnings so everything's good, it's a sunny day, our data's gonna go in. We can click that import to logbook button and now we have a four flight logbook to run and gun with. But what happens if we get errors? Well, there are errors like we saw in the slides from converting log 10 and Zulu log that do not prevent submission. The most common of those is the non-standard approach type. This is just saying that you didn't have the right space between RNAV and GPS, or you had an open parentheses instead of a closed parentheses. So all you have to do is go to those entries, make sure that the data looks proper in yours, it's assigning the right data. That's all in verification, which we're gonna discuss here in a few minutes. Landings may not be properly qualified as day, night, or full stop, because it might just be landings, because some people just count landings, like helicopter pilots. We don't count takeoffs. <laughs> you want to land the thing. So we uh, don't have to worry about that. And then with uh, some fields being not imported, 
uh, I was not clicking the mouse there. I do apologize. Um, the, uh, like with instrument approach procedure, um, it doesn't understand what IAP means. It's just a computer. So garbage in, garbage out. So what's going to happen is it's just going to ignore that data. So if you want to bring it back in, right now you can go back, reformat it according to the formatting notes we previously discussed, try to import it again, or you can import only that one column. But remember, it, if you, and I haven't discussed this yet, but if you import more than one file and you include the same data, you're just going to get duplicates. So what you need to do is you need to either modify it in the app or export your sheet, do the correction, reset your logbook, send it back to the logbook. If that does happen, though, you will lose all of your data in your logbook. Reach out to us with any questions before that, and we can guide you through that process. So what are errors that do prevent submission? And the most important errors here are going to be the formatting errors. People that enter like June 31st is not a day, so it's going to kick that out. If you accidentally hit the, hit the negative button on an entry, if you didn't do your date format correctly, or if you're using text when it's expecting numbers, that's absolutely going to kick it out. And then uh, one of these tools, it shows you the row where the error is, and it shows you the value that's wrong. So it's going to tell you exactly where to go find it in your data. However, just like everything else, there's a catch. Uh, CSV files start with row zero, and programs like Excel, they start with row one. So when you're looking here and it says row 31, that's actually going to be row 32 in Excel. So uh, just be mindful of that. It's going to be very close to where it actually shows. But since it starts with that row zero, there's actually an extra row in there. So uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. I actually had this support ticket earlier today. And it's about the file's not able to be processed because it's not a CSV file. Even though you're looking at it on your computer and it says CSV, hey, that is a CSV file. Why won't it go in? Well, it's all about that first line of code, that line zero, that is a verification line. And what happens most commonly is people put and separate the title of our template into three, into three different cells. It needs to be in one cell. It needs to not see commas between words if those words are not the properly formatted headers. Forflight's not looking for the word forflight. It's not looking for the word logbook. It's not looking for the word import, but it is looking for one phrase of forflight logbook import. That's a key that triggers the, the program to know that this is our template and understand that the data should be correct as it's going in. So if you are one of those people that kind of likes to get a little too much into their data and you separated this into three separate fields, this is most likely what the problem is going to be. Make sure that that cell A1, which is actually going to be zero first space in the CSV, is going to be either one of the approved comp, one of the approved formatting terms or the four flight logbook import at, in one cell. So now we've gone through all of that hard work and we've got a successful import. We need to still verify that data. So what you need to do is I always like to tell people, take a picture of the import preview or do a screenshot because that can be compared against the experience report to be able to show you 33.6 hours on one, 33.6 hours on the other, and we know that our information is going in there. Otherwise, you can just open up the last entry in there, and it should be the one on the bottom, and then it, or, or the first entry is the lowest down, and then the most recent is going to be that first row of import. And uh, when you go into your logbook, you should be able to see that both of those are the ones that you started with and verify that data going forward. So we've got our data into the logbook. What's the next step and really the last step before we get into our Q&A is completing our logbook with putting our qualifications, running our logbook reports and sharing logbook entries. So the first place we're going to go is we're going to start adding our certificates. 
With your certificate, you're going to tap on the qualifications tab. When you do that, you're going to see a plus symbol in the top. And today we're going to tap that plus symbol and then certificate. We get a whole host of items that we can choose from here. And we're going to choose commercial pilot as I am a commercial pilot. And when we do that, we have our formatting screen. We're going to put in our certificate number, our date issued. And here is a big one. A lot of support tickets about this, guys. There's the when if you don't have an expiration date on an endorsement or on a certificate like a pilot's license, even though you tap on there and it shows you the dates, hit clear, it's going to say never and then hit close. A lot of people do it. They hit clear and then they hit the date again and it, it kind of goes back and forth. But this is how you get a never expiring endorsement or uh, in this case, just a certificate. So we'll uh, hit that clear button and uh, then close that out. So now that we've got our issue date and our expiration date, we're going to touch on that add rating and it gives us our ratings under our certificates. So I'm a commercial helicopter pilot. I'm going to choose rotorcraft helicopter. It adds it in there. The next thing we're going to do is add a photo of my actual certificate. You don't get to see that. That's for me, but that's where you do it. You click on add photo, copy that up there to you and attach it to the entry. Click the done button and we've got that certificate added. So now we're going to add one of my favorite things is the medical certificate because this ties to a currency so that you can always know where your logbook currency is and when it's going to expire, especially flight instructors like me where we have to get it either every six months or a year, depending on the level of your, if you're maintaining those levels or if you're doing it under class three or basic med, you can do that here in the ForeFlight app also. So we're gonna tap on certificate again. We're gonna choose medical certificate this time. I'm going to put in my second class, the date it was issued, it expires 24 calendar months later, not to the date. So I put in March 31st, and then I add a photo of it actually there, and then I click the done button. And now it's going to show us the certificates with our commercial pilot for our certificate, the rating of helicopter, rotorcraft helicopter, my certificate for flight instructor, rotorcraft helicopter, and my medical certificate, second class. So now that we've got that information in, what about our endorsements? Complex, high performance, 90 day solo, all of those kinds. We've got them all here in the app going the same direction. Hit the plus sign in qualifications and then endorsement. But the cool thing about endorsements is we can actually look up the text for a lot of endorsements that are very common. They are available here and you can scroll through pick which one that you're going to need. Uh, and today we're just gonna do a solo flight, first 90 day period. It's going to put that text in there. Your instructor can then tap and enter your first and name and then the make and model and then any restrictions, VFR only, winds less than 10 knots, uh, stay within side of the field, things like that. They can put anything they would like to in that field. They do not have to use the prerequisites for what we are saying. And then they can put their issue date and expiration date the same way. They can uh, sign it right here in the app if they want to, or they can actually send you an endorsement from their iPad and it will show up there in your qualifications also. And it keeps a record for them, which is required by the FAA. Or if you're bringing in that paper log book and you've got a complex endorsement from five years ago, you can just take a picture of it and add it as a photo and then click that done button and you will have all of your qualifications and that's how we get that taken care of. So one of the other issues that we're going to do is we're going to print that actual logbook out and we do that in reports. Now we've got the complete logbook. We've got two reports, a one page and a two page. So we've got an abbreviated version or a full version. Um, if it just depends on what you want to do or how many fields that you're keeping track of. But for sake today, we're just going to tap on that one page and we're going to print it out. And this is how it looks. It off colors the alternating rows to help associate the data as you go across. And it actually adds the CFI signature and their comments. It will also do your comments in the additional comments and remarks on the side. 
and then you can either email this or print it directly from inside the iOS app. The complete logbook reports are not currently supported on ForeFlight Web. This is a formatting issue. Hopefully we can get that working in the future, but for now, if you want your full reports, you're gonna to have to use the methods we're fixing to discuss. So when you click on that button, it's gonna show you two options, email or print. A lot of support tickets about, I don't see an email button here. That's because this is looking for the iPad's native mail app. If you don't have that set up, if you're using Google uh, Gmail, if you're using Yahoo Mail, if you're using Wackadoo Mail, and you've, they've got their own app, and you wanna send it through there, I do have a workaround for you. And that's gonna be in my pro tip for today. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the print icon. And when you see the print preview of that very first page, tap on it with your two fingers and then spread it apart like you're zooming in. When you do this, it's gonna bring up a full screen view of your preview, but it's got another share button. And when you touch that share button, it's going to bring up the native iOS sharing feature. And one of those items is probably going to be your wackadoo mail. And you can click on there. You can save it to files. You can use any of the available native iOS sharing features there. So that's a good workaround. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. So now we're going to talk about one of our last few subjects is sharing the actual logbook entries from your logbook to another logbook. So we open the entry that we have completely filled out. It's got the map preview there, and I'm going to tap on the contacts. These are actually the people in your people list for your passengers. That was one of those options down in the bottom of logbook settings or the logbook menu actually. So when you send this to you, you're going to see that little red bubble saying, you got something in the logbook you need to go check out. So you go over there and here is a draft entry from me to me, shocking, I know. So when we click on that and we see the logbook entry, the same as we did on the other iPad, but it's got delete or share, I mean, delete or approve. So we go through, verify all of that information, click that approve button, and now it's added to your logbook. So the flight that you went to Oshkosh with your buddy and you wanna have his data from ForeFlight, go ahead and uh, get him to share it with you. But if you wanted to share that flight with somebody else, you could click the share button to share with friends and family. And that's going to send you to a web link. It's going to bring you to four flight on the web and it's going to show you a very generalized version of that same flight. So that's our data for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the webinar, but I do have one more piece of advice for you. If this seems like something you don't want to tackle, it happens all the time. You know, time is worth money too, so why not hire it out? We do have friends at AccuLog. They are a pilot logbook conversion company, and they do so much more than that. They can double check your files for validity. They can check for math errors. They can look for mis misappropriations of you named an airport wrong or you did your cross-country planning numbers wrong, whatever. They're a one-stop shop. We, do a, we send a lot of people their way, they send a lot of people our way. They are, are able to utilize their four flight account. They are subscribers themselves. They can test your logbooks with them, uh, reach out to them anytime, and they provide a wonderful service. But my favorite part of four flight is the pilot support team. And when we say fanatical pilot support, we actually really mean it very ingenuine. We love this app. We love aviation. We love talking to you. And just like everything else in customer service, you know that you're dealing with problems all the time. We understand that. We're there to help you. We're there from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week for you. So send us an email, team at fourflight.com. And if it's logbook, it's probably coming to me anyway. So send it along. We're more than happy to help you. So with that being said, I'm going to take a drink of water and we're going to start the Q&A. Awesome work there, Joey. Uh, this is Thomas Darty from uh, the product team here at ForeFlight. Um, Joey, round of applause. That was uh, an excellent walkthrough of all of the, uh, the complicated bits of getting your logbook converted over there. Uh, I've got a series of questions here for you that I think touch on a lot of different subjects. 
Awesome. Um, and to start us off there, something that I'm sure you deal with on a pretty regular basis is finding out type codes for different aircraft. How do I look up the type code for my aircraft? So I could give you a really difficult way to do it, but you can do the same thing I do. Ma Google. Um, that's how I get the type codes 90% of the time, uh, especially when I'm working on weight and balance profiles. I get the type code so that I can go look up the, the certificate, the type certificate in the actual TCDS. So uh, that's the best way to find out your type codes. Um, for the most part, you can look in your you can look in the performance profiles also, and they'll kind of give you a shortcut to them. But uh, Ma Google, that's my answer. Awesome. A couple, a couple of different ways to go through and do that. Um, this is one that I know that uh, both of us have, have definitely run into uh, different times. Uh, a, a round robin cross country flight with landings at multiple airports, as I might do when I'm in my cross country training. What are good ways for me to enter that information? Absolutely. I would say this is very, it's in the top five of the most responded questions because you're looking at that instrument private or the private or instrument reports and it's not checking that task off for you and you're going why not well it's very simple actually because what you're going to do is you have to have an aircraft selected a lot of people forget to select their aircraft but you want to have your to and from airports be the same point round robin right so to and from is going to be airport a and most of the time people just have the route hidden in, conf in configure fields. Make sure that route's shown. So you're gonna go from airport A to airport A and the route was B and C. Use a space, not a comma there, by the way. And that's going to actually populate the total distance and check those tasks off for you. So remember, utilize from A to A route B or C or D or anything in between. Great, awesome way to, to be able to start taking advantage of those different reports that are in there. Um, this one's a, a good one, especially as a helicopter pilot there. Uh, does logbook support or accept non-airport locations and the to and from fields? So absolutely. For flight is just like a paper logbook. So anything you put in the to and from will be stored that way. In my early practice days, we would leave from the airport I learned to fly at, and we'd go to the east practice area. So I actually have in my logbook from KARA, where I learned to fly helicopters at uh, Vortex Helicopter Academy in New Iberia, Louisiana. Just a shout out to all those guys. And um, we'd go out to the east practice area. So that would be where my two would be. So it'd be from KARA to the east practice area. So you can put anything you want in there. Now, the tricky part is actually getting the distances right. So you'll have to actually put in a uh, GPS coordinate there, but it does support user waypoints. So on the maps page, when you enter the route in there and use a user waypoint, if you send that to maps, I mean, send it to logbook from maps, user waypoint will be supported there. So that's a good way. So yes, you can use uh, any entry that you want for your to and from fields. Ah, great, great to know there. Um, here's one that I'm sure is getting a little bit more use these days. Uh, how do you enter ground training only? Ah, yes. So this is, I don't want to call it a limitation because we can present this data, but ground is not one of the supported fields in our logbook printing report right now. So I do tell my people, Go ahead and put the ground training in as a custom field, and then you can put it however you want. It's either classroom, it could be one-on-one -on -one ground training, however you want to. Then you can print the experience report, and it will detail ground training there. It shows the regular ground field that we supply or the custom one that you present. Both of those are going to be available in the experience report. Awesome. And uh, and one last one as we, uh, we hit our hour mark here as we come up. Um, can you use the request instructor signature even if your instructor is not a ForeFlight user? Ah, this is a good one. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, you are a ForeFlight user and he's not. This also works if your instructor is and you aren't. So, it's kind of back and forth. But what's going to happen is you put in your instructor's email address. You send that, he gets an email from ForeFlight and it's going to say, hey, this person has requested a signature from you. So what you do is you click on the link and it's going to prompt the instructor to create just a free login. 
to foreflight.com. And when he does that, he can review your information, make comments and sign. He cannot change the values. Whenever you send an, a request to, a, to an instructor, they cannot change it. All they can do is approve it and comment. They can either decline it, send it back to you to be re-edited or approve it. So make sure your data is right before you send it and before they sign it. That's your responsibility and theirs. The same thing goes for endorsements. You cannot request an endorsement from your CFI. They can only send them to you. So you either create it, have them sign it, or they can send it to you. Now, what happens if you're a CFI and you send a, a entry or an endorsement to somebody that's not in ForeFlight? Well, what's gonna happen is it's going to send them a PDF copy of that, and then they can print it out, they can tape it into their paper logbook and take it along with them, totally legal and totally secure and keeps a record with the CFI. Awesome, I do actually have one more for you here because I, I, I like this question here. Um, if I remove airplanes from ForeFlight, will I lose any logged time associated with those tail numbers? Awesome, so what this is happening is you went into the more aircraft tab and you went to remove one and you got this little bitty warning that said, hey, you're fixing to remove this aircraft from 21 flights. Are you sure you wanna do this? Well, what it's doing is it's taking that aircraft off of the flights page, not the logbook. They're not connected in any way. Any aircraft you delete in the aircraft section is not going to affect the aircraft in the logbook. Now, here's a catch-all. What happens if you try to delete an aircraft in the logbook and it won't delete? Well, that's because that aircraft is in the more logbook page. So. If you have an aircraft in the more logbook page, I mean the more aircraft page, you're not gonna be able to delete it out of the logbook if it's over there. That's the only way they're really tied in is the fact that they're gonna be in both places if you have it. So if you need to remove an aircraft completely, you gotta delete it from more aircraft and then the logbook second. Awesome, and I, I think that's all of our questions there. Um, and I'll hand it off uh, back to Sam. Thanks, Thomas, and thanks, Joey. That was truly an amazing presentation. Uh, I actually learned a bunch of stuff just listening to that. So thanks so much uh, for spending the time on, on putting that together and hosting it. Uh, I want to first off say uh, sorry to everyone who did not um, get their question answered. <laughs> you all are absolutely voracious uh, when it comes to, to questions, obviously. And so, uh, a lot of them are gonna have to uh, be unanswered for this webinar, um, but I wanna say absolutely do not settle for having your questions stay unanswered permanently. You can email team at foreflight.com. Uh, any question that you submitted, you know, heck, heck, take a screenshot of the list of questions uh, that haven't been answered if you'd like to and send them in and we will get to them there. Um, it's just naturally a bit difficult when we're getting, you know, half a dozen to a dozen questions every minute coming in with uh, only about six support staff members. So especially for something that's a bit technical and complicated like logbook. Um, so again, apologies if you didn't get your question answered, but please do reach out to us uh, over email and we will get it taken care of. Uh, as you can see on the screen right now, the logbook guide is uh, very helpful if you're wanting to learn about some of the features of logbook. You can find it within the uh, for flight documents catalog within the app, or if you go search our support center at our website, uh, you'll find it there as well. There are a couple of um, logbook support links. Uh, you can just search within the support center for that top one. And the second one, if you go to foreflight.com slash videos and search for logbook, that'll take you to that second URL there, uh, which has all the videos related to logbook. Our blog, blog.forflight.com, has lots of information. And specifically related to this presentation, there's a really great blog article there about catch-up entries. So you just go to that URL, blog.forflight.com, and just search for catch-up entries. Uh, and that'll take you to that, to that article about how to do that. We got a lot of questions saying, oh, you know, I have my logbook goes back to 1970. I don't want to enter all that. What, what should I do? Catch-up entries is the way to go. So definitely look into that if, if you're in that boat. 
And lastly, uh, this webinar is just one in a series of webinars, the On Frequency series. So visit fourflight.com slash on frequency to sign up for future webinars. Uh, this webinar, this one we're in right now, will be up uh, embedded on that page so that you can watch it starting later today or tomorrow. So just go take a look back uh, in a day on that page and you'll find this webinar if you want to if you had to leave early, I, I don't know why I'm saying that because I guess you wouldn't be here, but if you uh, couldn't hear anything or if you have a friend or a, a, a fellow pilot who you think would want to see this, send it to them. Uh, it'll be available on that page. And lastly, once again, there is a survey at the very end of uh, of this webinar once we hit the, the finish button. So uh, please stick around and fill that out and uh, let us know what you thought about the webinar and what you think we should do on future webinars. So once again, thank you so much everyone for joining. Uh, it's been really great holding all these webinars and seeing the kind of attendance and interest we get with them. And so I am looking forward to seeing you all on our next webinars. Thanks again to Joey and uh, Thomas, and we'll see you all next time.